another space for me because I didn't, I was, I was only new to Belfast. Um, and so the studio became a little space for me to go um, with Dura. But in that time, I wasn't really able to make work because I was full-time parenting um, with a, a young child. And then this opportunity came up, the satellite residency. You may have heard as in the previous talks, it's um, the Mothership Project has been mentioned and they are a group, uh, a network of Irish parenting visual artists and art workers and they set up this uh, residency called the Satellite Residency, and it was at the Cowhouse Studios in Wexford. Now, I attended in November 2019. The residency was a research, was, was a research project for them um, to um, bring, to give an opportunity for parents to be able to um, go go on residency and to and to uh, collect uh, a study and um, a survey from these artists about their experiences of being a parenting artist or carer um, in Ireland and then with that information they presented it to the Arts Council in the end and there's a publication available of those findings. Um, so to go to the actual practicalities of being on the residency. Um, I was there for a week and I went with Dira, leaving uh, my husband here uh, to just to use at work. Um, and um, they had like child, you know, stair gates and they had a playroom and all the meals were provided. And they had a person who looked after the kids um, in the middle here of the screen. And, um, and she looked after them five days a week. The name's gone out of my head, I think Sheila. Uh, but um, and then Frank cooked all the meals and it's Frank and Rosie run it. Rosie's the uh, founding, she, it's, it's her family uh, farm and, and home place and together herself and Frank run the Cowhouse uh, Studios. The Mothership Project is a great group of, of people who've come together um, to, to advocate for parenting artists in Ireland and also to advocate for the carer so uh, um, I'm not going to speak too much because I'm not saying the right thing. Um, so uh, out of that, um, I knew I was preparing a piece of work for um, a festival, another festival in Cavan that I was invited to. Um, and um, this was, um, so this was like a year and a half after this is 2019 so more than a year so this is year and a half so i i think of this as the second piece of work as a mother this one is called smothered and um this was from um but um this was very much about that kind of space of being between the phone and reality um like with with a child um and this uh very I guess sharing these kind of visuals of yourself, this that that cocoon of it was a kind of a cocoon space in the phone where I would have conversations with my sisters and uh, kind of closest friends and share photos because we don't really like to show photos of our children online. So um, and just kind of share our experiences and talk about whatever was going on. Um, but it, it was also a kind of it was a very isolated sort of time um when you have a child because it's it's this magical thing and it's wonderful but you're also it's it was a whole uh, major change um and transformation for me and it took quite a lot to adapt and get used to that and so i guess smothers is a bit about figuring that out um and like almost like not understanding the words that come out of your mouth because you're talking to an uh this, this new person who's a completely clean slate um but who still talks back <laughs> so um yeah I, I have a video of that but uh, basically um so what i did is i walked around town dressed uh, around cabin town dressed like this and I chose this outfit to be a bit like a tour guide so I could kind of stand out so as well as wearing runners so it was flat and comfortable um so it was almost like to be able to get the job done and I felt like a tour guide was a, a, the right kind of um 
person to adapt for that. So when I talk in my artist statement about uh, roles, um, I look at kind of the roles of women in contemporary Irish society. And, and I guess in these uh, performances, I'm, I'm looking at kind of fulfilling these roles, fitting into these shoes that, that um, yeah, well, they are my shoes in this case, but like, you know, looking at in, into um, other potentials um, of identities and, and roles. And um, so, yeah, so I brought the audience who I was so, uh, live streaming. Um, uh, I was doing a Facebook Live because um, I was considering that audience who weren't present with me in the town, but who were um, like that when I would be in Belfast here with Dira as a young kid. My family were in Cavan or wherever they were, my friends were. We talked to them. Um, so I was interested in that like uh, dislocated um space that we were in of the the screen um and i felt that um the facebook live offered um yeah no i could i could be there in the audience in in cavern so there was they were seeing something they could follow me i knew there was people who were going to follow me around there was also the projection of my Facebook live stream in a space in Cavan, organized by Joe and Siobhan and Philip. Um, and then there was the online audience. Um, and so then in, in um, this, it, for the online audience, I wanted it to be very much up to my face. So the whole recording is done like that with the screen right at my face because you don't see what's going on behind. So it's that kind of alluding to the, um, what you can't see. Um, uh, but I brought them on a big long walk. I, I did about at least 2K around the town. So. And during that time, I, I put on filters on the screen like you might. So that's in the bottom right hand corner and in, in the, the second image there you see. Right, this is the most recent um, performance that I did uh, uh, last week, week before. <laughs> And it's called Yellow on a Bike. Um, I took out the W because I felt it was a bit superfluous. So I just went with yellow. It all kind of felt like hello. Um, this, in one way, I see it as the third part of that uh, mothering uh, performances, uh, motherhood related performances. But uh, also, um, it kind of, it's, uh, it's almost, the motivation and the state of mind are very different. The, earlier this year, I was looking at proposals or I, I was kind of looking at work I might create this year. And I'm interested in, again, the carer in isolation and um, how, well, COVID kind of like, like right here, right, like right now, COVID has kind of highlighted this position of, of, of carers in isolation. And in some ways, um, opened opportunities, I guess, in a way, like uh, people from afar can watch this talk here um, and be part of this where they wouldn't otherwise be here. Um, so that's a, like a positive of, of uh, lockdown. Um, and then again, I was looking at the dual audience of the online versus the, just not be versus, in conjunction with the actual being in public. There, there was also from the, the beginning, so this was an invitation from Belfast International Festival of Performance Art. Um, and I, I think I had about two or three weeks to work on it. So I kind of responded very quickly to, um, as I said, this different state and I, I guess it came from the carer and the care packages. So I want to do something about care packages. Um, and so then I guess just the yellow on a bike, it's bright, it's warm, it's colorful, um, it's happy. And um, I sprinkled a little bit of this homemade yellow tissue paper confetti as I went. Um, I waved to people who waved at me, people tooted their horns as I cycled past. And then I was also online. Now I can show that, what are we at time-wise? Over 10 minutes, just you've done. Okay. Um, I'm gonna do a new share and show you a little video of that. 
Um, so I, I, I had two cameras on me. This is one. So this was an Insta360. Don't feel you have to go out and buy one now. I got this on loan from Ken Fanning, who runs Tumble Circus, and he is based at the studio. And very generously, without even knowing me, lent it to me for two weeks. So um, I had this on the front of my bike. And so I was able to bring people on a tour of the city um, and uh, just, just bring them somewhere else, like just get out of the hole of the home um, or, you know, the monotony of it all. And yeah, so I can press play on that, maybe. And then while the video was on, you can't so much do it in the editing, you can do that, but you could uh, move it around. You could do things like that with the, um, this is down at the keys in Belfast um, and then as part of it I also did uh, I did another YouTube the YouTube video is still up actually um, it should be up sorry just bear with me while I'm looking at this link to, to, to share sorry Okay, what are you seeing there now? Back to your slides. It's gone back to your slide where it says yellow on a bike. Good. Thanks. <laughs> okay, well, let's run with this. I ignore that. Yeah, there we are. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's another video of it, which um, is on, on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, I think it worked in, in the moment and um, it, it kind of like right here, why here, why now, um, to that it was, as I've already explained. So for this, for this final kind of section of the um, talk, I am going to talk through um, some drawings. Um, so I've, I've kind of, I was trying to work out why this, this is so, um, how I can talk about this. For me as an uh, artist, my practice um, seems to work well with doing residencies and kind of in terms of opportunities, it's invitations um, that I've been getting to perform that will um, encourage me to make new work almost or give me an outlet for work. Um, so, um, so I'm thinking of the invitations such as BIFA, the festival, uh, What If, um, and other fix here in Belfast, a number of different festivals that I've been part of, ones in Europe and uh, Germany and um, other places. Um, but also this glider residency, and this, I was able to do this in 2018 because it was in Belfast. So I didn't need any alternative childcare because um, Rob was able to, my husband to look after our son. Um, so I was able to attend this residency. Um, and then the other residency that I'm going to show pictures of uh, is, I'll flick down quickly, Breastival, which is a breastfeeding uh, festival uh, that happens annually at the Ulster Museum uh, over a weekend. And they invited me to be, well, actually, I contacted them because I was doing work around uh, uh, mother, Mother's Milk, which actually there's photos up in the background of and some bunting of vaguely um and so uh, together we arranged that i would be artist in residence for the festival through a conversation where i contacted them um, so again that was in belfast and i had childcare here so i didn't have to worry about bringing how where was i going to put the children for a week or something like that uh, residencies can take different forms they don't have to be overseas um, it can be on a glider over four days so with that in mind, the glider residency, uh, that was an open application. And I sent an application with uh, a couple of different proposed ways of um, doing the doing how how I was going to spend my time over the four days, five days. And I got a, a free bus pass for five days, which is great. Oh, glider pass. Um, and um, 
I discovered on the first day that I, I, I suffered travel sickness. So uh, I had to stop and get off at uh, Boots in the city centre because I was already feeling very ill at that point. I just started sketching on the way in. And uh, so, yeah, I got some travel sickness tablets and I was grand after that. But yeah. um, I still managed to do something like 23 different drawings, which included um, this on the left. So these are A3. I tend to work in an A3 uh, format for drawing um, because I draw in situ mostly at events, um, at performances, um, or kind of like in real life. Um, so like the drawing on the left there is called Dirty Little Freaks, and it was done at a cafe just inside the window of the cafe outside the Royal Hospital. Um, and it was along the um, glider route. So it was the beginning. These I find that the, the it, was, it was a fantastic opportunity because the glider had opened up the connection between East and West Belfast, um, which was like very significant. Anybody who's Belfast based will, will know that. Um, and then the one on the right, which you can't really see here because I've got protective acid-free paper on top of it, um, is from the city centre bus stop. That's one of the central glider stops in the middle of the town opposite City Hall. Um, I work with work on regular kind of uh, cartridge paper or I've just bought a fancy new paper uh, but um, and I use kind of I tried to use archival pens and archival inks or light fast ones um, I had a, this case was made up for me I had it I commissioned the case to be made up and this piece was purchased by the Arts Council of Northern Ireland last year the, case, the portfolio of drawings. So here's one of the drawings. Um, there's one line is my technique because it's it's all about failing. You can make as many mistakes as you want, and that's okay. Like the sillier it is or the uglier it is, kind of better in some ways. Um, then uh, um, in the bottom right hand corner, you can see my signature and then just right of that there's these little marks one two three four five six that's how many lines there are on the page so if i take my pen off the page to look around or i've been interrupted or something like that then you can um i i i, I mark that unless it kind of comes to sometimes i'm not I'm not like a really strict about that sometimes there will be spots or something i don't know what's happened there why is that going what can you see? It like it's gone out of full screen, just um, okay. to go back onto the present button. Mm. So that's the glider. Then there's the uh, breast of it. I'm just going to flick down to see. That's there's just those few pictures. Uh, there in the bottom right, that's me kind of drawing at the museum. Um, this here is the big latch on where they invite as many women breastfeeding uh, to come and at the same time latch on. And it doesn't just happen in Belfast, it's a kind of a worldwide event. So um, there was a lot of people breastfeeding in the, at, this, at this moment and um, very emotional to see all these women breastfeeding. It, it really emotional actually um, I was very moved I wasn't expecting it to be uh, what it was and uh, I felt very privileged to be there drawing it um, so there was like, hundreds of people sitting here breastfeeding at the one time um, so like I, because I'm doing one line drawing and I don't draw afterwards it's only whatever happens at the time um, things to explain a bit about that I'm interested in kind of movement and pace and time lapse and memory and fragmented memory and um like that even if you take a photograph it's only that split second of a moment so um I'm interested in that in terms of the line um of the pen um and the one I draw on I'm also interested from the perspective of film and editing and how my brain and my mind, I choose to edit as I go. So um, I've done a, a, a 
you know, okay, a commission recently of this you know, centre and um, it's really extremely detailed one line drawing. But then on top of that, I scribbled the actions of people going by as they go by, not off the, not from my memory, but as somebody walks past my, I will follow them on the pen and almost like tracing their action. So it could be the bin man or it could be a person with a buggy or somebody eating a bag of chips. Um, so on top of the, kind of like detailed stillness of something that's fixed I'll uh, draw an expressive kind of mark um, so I guess it's uh, partly to do with order and chaos and kind of that moment of uh, rupture um, and that's fine Yeah. This is a small snippet of, of um, my work in practice, but um, I hope you've enjoyed my introduction to some bits of some of the things I do. That was great. Thanks so much, Sally. Thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, so as I said before, we'll take questions at the end. So if you have a question pop it in the chat and we'll come back to it or you can raise your hand at the end um brilliant let me just get my introduction for samantha which i don't know why i've lost it right, sally do you want to just unshare your screen yeah thanks okay so also today with us we have samantha brown Samantha is a photographer and visual artist who studied fine art at Camberwell Arts London before moving to Ireland. She returned to studying multidisciplinary design in 2008 at the University of Ulster, and this led her to explore different media such as collage, cyanotype, digital and analog photography. Samantha's project Botany of Silence was exhibited at Photo 50 in the London Art Fair in 2020. And she's currently participating in the Centre for Creative Practices programme, New Voices of Ireland. And I think we're going to see a bit of that work today. Thanks, Samantha. OK, thanks, Sinead. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the development of the work of the work of Middle Passage, um, which was done uh, around COVID time. Um, it's I got this email about from Girl Trek about a walking meditation. And um, they're an American-based group. And um, so in the tradition of civil rights legacy, Girl Trek is a national health movement that activates thousands of black women to be change makers in their lives and communities through walking. So it was, during the time of June 2020, I don't know which lockdown that was, um, last year, and it was a, talking about self-care in the age of COVID, so about going out and walking. And while I was walking, um, I needed to kind of get out the house more, and um, it was a 21-day walking meditation, and during that 21 days, um, you were listening, I was listening to different histories of black women, African-American women from, um, who were leaders in the civil rights in their own way, whether it was cooking or law or music, acting or protesting. And while I was walking, I was learning about these different women, how diverse they were, and also getting myself out of the house, which kind of did kind of proved to be quite important to me to be actually get out and go for a walk and get some air and clear my head. So while I was walking, I was taking photographs as well, just what, what, whatever I felt like taking photographs while I was listening to a particular, oh, why isn't that going ahead? Yeah, there we go. Um, sorry, the feedback. So while I was listening to the, um, podcast um, about Octavia Butler, who is a science fiction writer. I would just take random photographs 
and um, Octavia Butler was the godmother of Afrofuturism. Futurism. In fact, the very act of trying to, this is a quote from her, the very act of trying to look ahead to discern possibilities and offer warnings is in, in itself an act of hope. So this is one of her poems. Um, to survive, let the past teach you, past customs, struggles, leaders and thinkers, let these help you, let them inspire you, warn you, give you strength, but beware, God has changed, past is past, what was cannot come again. To survive, know the past, let it touch you, then let the past go. Um, so the second, I haven't done them in order of 21 days, but um, the second one was Angela X. And I, there was usually a soundtrack as well while you listen to the conversation between these two women who have been friends for a very long time. And sometimes it felt like you were just over, you were kind of eavesdropping on their conversation rather than listening to a podcast about different women. So another one of these was Angela X um, from Angola. Um, um, just to say that millions were stolen from Africa. Um, in 1619, the first 20 set books in America. Um, Angela was one of them. Angola, where transatlantic slave, slave trade started. We don't know her name, but we do know she was buried, um, where she was buried, and she was found with cowrie shells, which is kind of a traditional African jewelry that speaks about fertility. And so while I was going on this walk, I would sit on this stone throne and look out at the beach. It just happens to be that I'm calling it a throne. And, um, and the view from that seat was looking over at the beach and just looking out at people that had traveled across water, across sea, in many different con yeah, circumstances, whether positive or, or negative. And I would take these photos some, sometimes when I was sitting on that stone throne. Um, this is Dovey Johnson Rantry, somebody I hadn't really heard of. She was worked in law. And um, in 1964, she offered to defend a poor man for one dollar accused of killing the girlfriend of John F. Kennedy. She was a socialite, she was executed in broad daylight. Um, and this, she defended this poor man who obviously wouldn't have any defense. And she won the case in 1964. She also, was a lawyer on um, some of the first buses um, decisions to, you know, to segregation on the buses. She was a lawyer for that too. So I was finding out quite a lot about people that I hadn't heard of and I didn't know what they had done. Um, and then that's another one from Dovey. So I was taking quite random images and that's again from the throne. I was still sitting on that stone throne looking at the beach at different times of day and on different walks. Um, so next one we have is Lucille Clifton. She is a poet. She was twice nominated for the Pulitzer Prize. And I've really got into her poetry and the collections of poems and um, still walking around and listening and learning about her. And then as a culmination of sitting out and looking at the beach and reading her poems and around at the time of the Black Lives Matter and Breonna Taylor and Elijah McCann, I suppose it's Instagram, so it's around that time. I was putting the two things together, putting the poems and images together. 
and this one of her poems called Generations, which is about, um, it's a family biography in which the poet traces her family history back through Jim Crow, the slave trade, to the women of the Dahomey people in West Africa. Now I've been trying to get this book, but apparently it's going to be released in November, so eventually now I won't have it. So that was really the start of the idea of the Middle Passage um, project. I didn't, I was contacted, or I, I applied to the New Voices of Ireland 8 to be a part of the cohort of people who are a lot of migrant artists. There were musicians, there were painters, there were poets, filmmakers. Um, so a very wide array of people from Tehran, from um, Bosnia, from Nigeria, from lots of different countries. And we were put together in um, partnership with other people. And I was put with um, Gaboye, who is a Afrobeat musician from Nigeria. Unfortunately, our, our um, pairing didn't work out that well. Um, we, had a, we had to have a few intermediaries to actually get to something, um, to get to something. Um, um, we did sort of clash. I think, I mean, I was hoping that it would be like I did a DNA of our blood history a long time ago. And I know that I have ancestors in Nigeria and I thought, oh, this is great. He's Nigerian. Like we'll be able to, you know, connect on that, but it just didn't work. Um, so uh, when I was starting my project, I was thinking about being the, the theme of water, being near water, people who have traveled on it. So within the five kilometers of where I live and in Dundalk, I was taking pictures of waterways going into Dundalk, there's the keys there, um, taking photos there. And that's the Navi Bank. It's a two mile walkway um, of the Castle Turn River. So lots of few different places and going back at different times a day and exploring those. And what I would do is just not take too much of the horizon of the sky. It's mainly just a little bit of the horizon. It's mainly what's the sea and coming up to my feet, really. It's very little sky or reflections of the sky or the clouds or whatever. Um, so for this project, I didn't want it to be the landscape to be too recognizable. So I thought, well, I would turn them upside down so it wasn't seen as a straight taking a picture of the beach. Or... So I carried on doing that, having photographs upside down just to kind of disorient the environment and give it a new kind of narrative to place the all the um, text that I put on the images. So this is um, text from Gaboye. He was a songwriter and he wrote some music and I quite I was quite inspired by these texts that he has. Exiled, it seems, the dream from the round to the sphere of reality. Artfully, it may sound to be exiled from one's own heart, literally, is some folk reality. And I know that at the time when we met, he was having quite a hard time getting funding from IMRO, and um, he was getting very frustrated and angry about it. Um, so it was quite an emotional time for him. This is another piece from a film. It's in the start of a film and there's someone giving a speech in a bar in South Africa. And um, I thought this was quite interesting to, to kind of have different types of voices, different types of storytellers as part of the project, like some of facts, some of fiction. Um, so it was different. I wanted to have different voices and this is the poem that I chose from Lucille Clifton out of her many collected poems. 
um, which does speak about the Middle Passage and just and does talk about um, Native Americans as well who were going on the Trail of Tears, having to move from their native lands to reservations and so I thought that was a good in thing to include. So that is it. How long have I been? And I can show the rest of the movie or oh, the video. Yeah, you've got um we're, we're 2020 to three. So yep, far away. Do you wanna can you show it from your side, Samantha? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All that is in creation is never lost, even when it decays, withers away. It is we can see the, the video, we can still see your original screen, we can just hear. Oh, right, sorry. Um, okay. I think you need to stop sharing that one, maybe. And then... Oh, okay, yeah, one sec. Maybe I'll stop sharing and start again. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, go back to the beginning. All that is in creation is never lost, even when it decays, withers away, it is not discernible by our visible senses. Instead, it is transformed into another form or function such as that existence continuously replenishes itself. You will soon be shot into the void like an arrow, flying like a bird, diving the way an alligator dives to the bottom of the river. But remember, the arrow shot into the air always returns to earth. The force so mysterious elevates to self higher consciousness. Equality exists in the air we breathe. The body's broken on the trail of tears, and the bodies melted in middle passage are married to rock and ocean by now.
grass was growing out in the middle. I tried to remember what used to happen to me on these shores. Nothing, absolutely at all, nothing appeared in my mind. Rivers of mist, the rivers of legend, and the rivers of history flow in many ways. Each river holds a viewpoint with a certain race, tribe, or nation. Exiled, it seems, the dream from the realm and sphere of reality. Outfully, it may sound, the exile from my memory back. Literally, it is some great reality. Where all waters converge is the delta of remembering, the place where truth touches every heart, the truths that bring the remembering are spoken by the storyteller. Under the 200-year-old barbub tree, in the middle of the millet field, men and women are regrouping slowly around a pair of xylophones and a drum. Grandfather's funeral had begun.
particular transmission of human experience from Europe to Africa to the Americas and back again corresponded to the same cosmic forces that set the Atlantic currents in motion. You will soon be shot into the void like an arrow, flying like a bird, diving the way an alligator dives to the bottom of the river. But remember, the arrow shot into the air always returns to earth. Spirit, please take this water and make it the river of my life. I don't know where my river is flowing to, but I know you do. And so uphold this water and join it with other great rivers out there. So my life may flow in a much more smooth way. In the deep, bells speak when people cannot. You will hear for yourself the church bell speaks, toiling beneath, under the waters. Toiling, toiling. In the deep, bells speak when people cannot. They say in Nazareth, if you place your ear to the ground, you can still hear the cries and whispers of those who perished under the flood, their spirits hallowing from the deep. She had slave girl memories. She rocked and hummed them there. Her daddy's neck and legs in chains, his own bonnet in his hair. Stories grandma told me. She rocked and hummed them there. Great grandpa's neck and legs stretched out with bonnet in his hair.
where are your monuments, your battles, your martyrs? Where is your tribal memory, sirs, in that grey vault, the sea? The sea has locked them up. The sea is history. A dreadful storm and hideous wind began to blow from the northeast, swelling and roaring as if by fits, some hours with more violence than others, at length did beat all light from heaven, which, like a hell of a darkness, turned black upon us. On shipboard, many slaves mutinied, attempted suicide, jumped overboard or refused to eat. The most recent estimate suggests that there was a revolt on one in 10 voyages across the Atlantic. Do you have more slides, Samantha, or is that? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much. That was such a really moving piece. Um, and a few people, I think, mentioned it in the chat as well. The the first, that's not the first time I've seen it. And the first thing that struck me was the layers and the content in it. And, you know, as it develops, it just continues to become more like that. It's a really, really interesting piece. And there was something I noticed when I listened to it. I couldn't hear it so well there, but there's diff different elements of sound come through. There is, yeah. Um, I put the link in the chat for people. Yeah, they can go and have a look again. Yeah, yeah. I think so, because there, there's definitely elements of sound that I, I wasn't getting on my own laptop there, but I've heard when I've listened to it previously. So thank you so much for that. Um, and I also kind of thought there was something in both your works, even though it was so different, there was that element of the viewer being controlled um, through the video, which is really interesting, you know, where you're feeling that, I was feeling that I wanted the video to stop on the words or something, and then it was moving on. And I, I kind of got that with yours as well, Sally, with with the, the 360, 